you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, since all through the previous uh, panel discussions we've had about Africa's high growth rate, uh, which has failed to significantly dent, uh, dent poverty levels, um, the recent World Economic Forum for Africa in Cape Town, um, under the uh, Kofi Annan uh, um, chaired panel, tackled this paradox um, for answers. Um, direct foreign investment uh, in Africa has increased to 5.5%. Uh, um, however, the investment to GDP ratio um, is the lowest among developing uh, um, countries. Poverty rates um, in, in uh, West Africa are not going down at the same rate as the growth rate is going up. There is uh, growth without equity. And this has social consequences, particularly in, the, in health, nutrition, and education. They come out quite badly. This statistic that we've been hearing all morning um, is uh, based in the context of global trends, uh, which are your demographic shifts, economic uncertainty, repeated crisis, uh, food insecurity, natural disasters, and civil strife, and also climate change. Um, a farmer friend of mine in Burkina Faso calls it climate chaos rather than climate change. Um, poor nutrition impairs health and human capital development with significant consequences on economic growth and development. The Nobel laureate uh, Vernon Smith um, did say that one of the most compelling investments is to get nutrients to the world undernourished. The benefits from doing so in terms of increased health, schooling, and productivity are quite enormous. That's true. Because of the multifactorial nature of malnutrition and uh, uh, micronutrient deficiency, interventions are needed for, from multiple sectors to complement direct nutrition interventions and address underlying causes. <coughs> Some of the primary socioeconomic uh, reasons for persistence of uh, malnutrition and uh, micronutrient deficiency include um, high fertility rate, uh, increased uh, incessant civil strife, low agri production, lip services being paid to micronutrient uh, deficient eradication, and what I call elusive uh, financial transparency, otherwise known as corruption. Uh, Improving the nutrient to calorie ratio in a cost in a cost neutral way is a challenge to government agencies. Multiple health and nutrition interventions addressing malnutrition and food security in West Africa include the full um, large scale food fortification, vitamin and mineral supplementation, homestead food production, biofortification for the sweet potato, maize, cassava. Um, rice and millet, public health measures like deworming, parasite control, and malaria, and tree aid and uh, um, fruit trees um, aid. Millions of families in West Africa, for millions of families, farming is not an occupational choice, but is the sole available means of survival. Those who are familiar with uh, rural um, uh, um, living would know that consumption of a single food item is the norm for most um, families, leading to an imbalanced diet on farming households. Urban children are not, left, are not left out. The urban poor are also underweight and stunted. The double burden of malnutrition and also the nutrition transition process are increasingly seen not only in the urban areas but also in the rural communities. Community-based approaches to reduce poverty have been put in place in the past with negligible uh, results, especially with little impact on the poor. The experience with uh, conditional cash, cash transfer in the um, Americas, this anti-poverty program has been successfully implemented, and uh, it gives uh, the poor money directly. And pilot programs are currently being uh, implemented in Kenya, South Africa, Malawi, and Burkina Faso. The making, in making conditional cash transfer uh, uh, conditional, the interventions uh, seek to encourage human capital accumulation and break a cycle where poverty is transmitted across generations. Parents are often decide strategically to invest the funds received on education and health of their children. 
We must move from assessment to an action agenda. We must move from science to action. Researchers should support efforts to translate research evidence into meaningful programs and policies. Decision to use one strategy evidence versus another will be based on programmatic opportunities, feasibilities, and cost effectiveness. There are models, plenty of them, they do exist to solve micronutrient deficiency. What is needed is commitment to utilize these findings. Governments must enlist the understanding, active cooperation, and assistance of the people who are most affected, not only at the national level, but also at local and at the family level. Recall the words of Mahatma Gandhi when he said, everything that you do for me and for us, without us, you do against us. We must work with the community. Investments uh, to reduce hunger and undernutrition are good economics. I echo the words of John McDermott. These investments should aim to reduce hunger, micronutrient deficiency, and inappropriate development of the, of the child in the first 1,000 days. Such investments should include low-cost interventions, helping communities to uh, consume safe, diverse, and nutritious foods, whilst controlling diseases and protecting the environment. Policymakers are torn between high food prices, which encourages agricultural production and high income for farmers, and low food prices, which benefit poor buyers of food. The policymakers have important policy, uh, political uh, decisions to, to take and political objectives to, to, um, uh, to look at. This uh, including both uh, social and political instability. The Senegalese uh, case uh, in point of, as far as the, rice, the price of rice in Senegal is concerned um, is quite uh, you know, uh, instructive. Policymakers are also faced uh, with the dilemma of responding to new research data. A case in point is the Davita research on vitamin A supplementation and its effect on childhood mo uh, morbidity and mortality. There has been a, there's a huge cry about this uh, going on right now uh, in, the, in the professional circles. Certain interventions have, put in place in, have been put in place in West Africa to address nutrition, agriculture, and health interrelationship. This include uh, enhanced homestead production, school feeding programs, salt iodization, um, ECOWAS uh, food fortification program, and biofortification. There are challenges to these solutions that uh, we may be thinking about. These include uh, the challenge of sustainable diet, a need to, in to address uh, income needs as well as knowledge gaps. We know that Africa has 2% of global new knowledge and 0.5% and of uh, in in inventions. We must re-examine national strategies to benefit uh, vulnerables. Sustainable value chain um, addition and income generation uh, um, should be re reviewed. We must utilize food technology and quality assurance systems and human resources management to support and increase the potentiality of local foods to reduce micronutrient deficiency. And policy makers as to stress equity in nutritional status and health, sustain economic growth and development. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask your kind permission to make use of my privileged position as chair to reduce the time for the discussion? Instead of 30 minutes, we take 15 minutes because we have other things to do and we're already two hours behind time. And I'll open the floor for contributions, comments, and questions, please. Yes. Voilà, merci, Président. Uh, je vous présente uh, Dr. Sissé de, du Crot. De...
Good. Well, um, can I ask the panelists to say their last words? Because I think you don't have direct questions to you, but you may have issues to address. Je vous remercie.
Um, just three issues. Um, just to stress the um, issue of uh, sustainable value chain um, addition and income generation, um, trying to close the loop uh, in, uh, with policy, between policy and practice, and uh, also what the Oxford group call the disruptive innovations. We should not go back to think, you know, doing things as normal. We must get out of the box. If you have to think outside the box, you must get out of the box. That's disruptive innovation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let me summarize the session by saying that uh, one of the key revelations that have been provided here is that the, the poor people spend more than half of their income on food, and uh, agriculture must be related to social protection. We have a lot of information on uh, nutrition problematic, but less solutions. Uh, social protection generates positive impact on economic transformation. There has been an attempt to define social protection to be public action to reduce population vulnerability to economic transformation, and it can be in the form of transfer of resources. Uh, today we talk about uh, inclusive growth. How do we take along vulnerable groups, uh, persons along the economic transformation process? Examples have been given uh, for Senegal, which has tried to address social protection with good progress, for example, the insurance policies, scholarships, and so forth, although there are challenges. Uh, poverty is a serious issue in West Africa that has social consequences. And I must conclude by referring to what, what uh, Mr. Kaba Thomas Faye said, the negative impact of economic transformation without addressing social protection is enormous. There is need to move from words to practice or to action. So, as uh, the Director General of IFPRI said, let's walk the talk. And with our farmers, including the women and the youth in West African agriculture, who constitute the bulk of the population, we have to walk the talk with them. And I thank you. A pleasant evening. <laughs>